Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2024-25 in the amount of 1 billion 894 million 110,800 Eastern Caribbean dollars. Mr. Speaker, I have no idea what that amount of money means. I will not have it in my kitty and I will not sit close to it. <laughs> but it is for the people of St. Lucia to be distributed among all the citizens. But Mr. Speaker, before I proceed in discussing the motion at hand, I want to take this opportunity to express gratitude. First of all, let me thank God for giving me the breath of life. And I'm still breathing, and I'm alive for a reason. And all of us in this house is alive for a reason. And we have to make good use of that opportunity the Lord has given us. I want to thank my husband who started that challenging journey with me all the way. I want to thank the doctors. And at the time, Mr. Speaker, it was like thinking on your feet. The doctors at Tapion, it was a last minute decision because I was on my way to OKEU. And then a diversion was made. And I want to thank Dr. Alwyn Benjamin, Dr. Christy Daniel, and some other doctors at Tapio and the nurses. Romel, oh, Romel Daniel, sorry. Uh, I want to thank my family, my close friends. I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and my cabinet colleagues. I want to thank the doctors in Martinique, Dr. Dabo. I want to thank the Council General in Martinique, Council General Alison Joseph, and the Cultural Attaché, um, Mr. Shazi Shalom. And I want to thank my team in the ministry, the departments I headed, the constituents of Babono, the people of St. Lucia, and those in the diaspora. Mr. Speaker, I still believe that miracles do happen. And Mr. Speaker, I think my experience is one that I will share in a very profound way with my cabinet colleagues. And I think more and more I believe in the policies of this government. With a 2.5% health and security levy, we never know who this government may save their lives. Not everybody may be fortunate to have an insurance or the health support. And I'm, I'm saying this, Mr. Speaker, because I know what I went through, and there are times government have to step in at least to allow you to step out. Even if you have insurance, you have finance, but somebody must step in to allow things to happen. And this is what the government did. They step in and ask me to move so that at the end of the day, whatever lives we can save in St. Lucia, we do it for every single citizen in this country. Mr. Speaker, I am happy today that I had to leave my, call myself out of sick leave, to be here to represent the people of Babono. Because nobody else would do that because that is why they elected me. 
And I thank the Lord for giving me the breath of life and the strength to come here to speak on their behalf. I want to commend my colleague minister who is holding the fort while I'm on sick leave. And I let him know that I was following him and he did a great job. I told him, be careful when he walks on eggshells. And he has done that very well, Mr. Speaker. I want my colleagues to put your hands together for Honorable Jeremiah Nubbins. Mr. Speaker, as I look at the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I am even more comforted. I call this budget a budget that is realistic and practical. It is a budget that is based on the principles of sharing the pie for everyone to get. It also reinforces my concept of how this government functions. And I have defined it several times that this government is charged with the responsibility of distributing water, distributing the wealth or resources of this country. And there are two instruments if you are using water to water plants. You can use a hose or you can use a spraying can. And this budget is actually re-emphasizing the spring can philosophy. What I know I saw happen during the last administration, they used the hose. And the hose only went to the roots of a few plants that got very big, as big as the massive tree we have in the Derrick Walcott Square. But with the spraying can, Mr. Speaker, you give life to every single plant. And whatever the Prime Minister has allocated, Mr. Speaker, to the tune of $1.8 billion, is going to spread it out so that every single plant, every single person in this country can get a little something out of it. And I applaud the Prime Minister with his wisdom and sharing the pie for us to survive. Mr. Speaker, I want to take you quickly to what I promised the people of Babolo. And some people usually hold parliamentary reps responsible for a whole set of things. But we must never forget what we document and what we put in writing is what we owe the people. And I promised the people in Babolo that we would repurpose on new space at the primary schools to increase access to early childhood education and adult education programs. And Mr. Speaker, when I listen to my colleague minister, um, colleague parliamentarian and minister on the, the budget item, the estimates item number 52, that speaks to education, innovation, and vocational training, Mr. Speaker, I know that is one area where we have started benefiting in terms of early childhood education and we're getting ready for the adult education. Because, Mr. Speaker, the Barbado constituency benefited from a pre-K classroom which was implemented by the Ministry of Equity. And that is catering for early childhood education in Babylon. BNTF, yes. Right, we, we have a pre-K classroom in the Babylon Primary School through the BNTF, and that is fulfilling that promise. Mr. Speaker, I promise to establish a Babylon eco-tourism project which will include turtle watching, outdoor camping, bird watching, and hike trails, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, if I go back quickly to the minutes item 46 in the estimates of revenue and heading 46, 
Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture, and Information. We are waiting patiently. We are promised, I saw a little snippet in the summary that Babono was mentioned, and I'm sure this time around, the ministry will come through to deliver some aspect of tourism. And Babono, Mr. Speaker, unlike other com constituencies, we have defined Babono as an agro, we go agro-tourism, because agriculture is the foundation for livelihood for Babono people, and we will work around it with tourism to enhance economic activity for the people in the constituency of Babono. Mr. Speaker, provide Wi-Fi access across the communities in the constituency. And Mr. Speaker, we have started that process where Babolo Central has Wi-Fi and there are a few other communities where Wi-Fi, the GI Net program will be installed to provide Wi-Fi for the people. So I know this is coming on the, um, the ministry on the, my watch, which is public service. So we know I am delivering along those lines. Improve access to land under a land rationalization program for housing and agriculture. And Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Housing and Local Government has started delivering, especially in the land rationalization program where the people at Talvan were able to get land, those who occupied the land for over 30 years, they were able to get land to the tune of $2.50 a square foot. That's um, a, a remarkable um, achievement by this government and in fulfilling my promise to the constituents. And on the housing, Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased that a number of persons who are most in need in the constituency, um, we have item number, budget line for estimates 48, Ministry of Housing and Local Government, that we will see the work of housing continuing in the Babono constituency. And I am very pleased that we were able to take people out of some deplorable conditions in which they live. And we have improved that under the housing program. Mr. Speaker, I also promise to redevelop Babono Central with a view to improving access to the services provided by the Babono Multipurpose Center. And Mr. Speaker, that too falls on the local government and I know equity, Ministry of Equity also share part of that responsibility for human resource development centers. And we have a multipurpose center that has been in existence since 1987 and it needs some major works. So I'm depending heavily on the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance to come to the rescue of the Babono people in this area. Mr. Speaker, as we look at the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I am putting all my colleague ministers on notice because what I have done during the past two and a half years is to hold a fort. And I've held a fort for them in a number of areas with the CDP contributions that come to the constituency. Every single ministry has gotten some activity going on under the CDP and some of the main ministries have also come forward to start some work. And Mr. Speaker, if I speak of work done in the Babono constituency, I need to thank the Minister of Infrastructure for coming to our rescue, especially in the area of slope stabilization and potholing. However, we are waiting for our share of roads, Mr. Speaker. And our share of roads will start with one road we call the 
Asuba Road. This was a road that was started under the last administration. It was stopped, and now it is a link road between Gara and Bogis. And once we open that road, Mr. Speaker, it's going to make life a lot easier for the people at Gara and the people at Bogis that end up in a kind of what we call a, 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 a stop zone. There is no through road that can connect it. And once we connect that road, we will have traffic flowing throughout Babalu. Mr. Speaker, as I speak to infrastructure, we have what we call the Poidu Road. And that's a road that was neglected by the last administration, but it was a very good road. It's a necessary road to help the farmers in the Talvan area. And I did some work in that area through my CDP to bring some relief to the farmers, and they are very grateful. But I am encouraging and hoping that the Minister of Infrastructure will come to make it a more motorable road. We have the Lafitte Road in the Babono Central area. This road, I did some work on it to make it motorable for the people, but we are hoping that Ministry of Infrastructure will help us complete that. Mr. Speaker, as we speak of roads, those of you who know Babono will understand there is a part of Babono where the road has not been developed. And these roads are critical for tourism and it's, they are critical for agriculture. And Mr. Speaker, I speak no other than the Mackey Road where I did some work in the road to re give some relief to the farmers. But the Mackey Road is also a road for tourism. The ATV riders use that road very often. It is a, a package for tourism and people explore St. Lucia looking for exciting places to visit. And this road there is serving that purpose. So here, infrastructure, agriculture, and tourism can come together to bring some relief. Mr. Speaker, I speak of the Grantons Road. And Grantons is a road that had never been addressed during the last 50 years. And Mr. Speaker, I was able to use some of the CDP funds to assist the farmers. It's a road that will serve tourism for turtle watching, bird watching, hiking. It is a road that will serve the farmers. And it was interesting to know about 50% of the watermelons that are produced in St. Lucia is coming from that area. So, Mr. Speaker, it, the, the, the farmers there, the, the, the ATV riders go into Grantons, all these are areas that need it. And, Mr. Speaker, there are many other little roads, but notwithstanding that, I need to commend the Ministry of Infrastructure. Right now, as we speak, they are working on the Lakwa Hill. That hill has been a problem for years. Every two weeks, a pipe from Wasco burst in that hill. And there was once the pipe burst and it actually pushed a vehicle. It has so much pressure, it pushed the vehicle down the hill. And right now, as we speak, I drove there this afternoon and I saw they are resurfacing that road. I need to thank the Ministry of Infrastructure and Wasco for bringing great relief to the people in Babylon. Mr. Speaker, as we move quickly, we speak of housing, and the housing repair program has been going on very well, and I'm hoping that in the future plans of the Ministry of Local Government and Housing, that we will get one of the high-rise buildings I saw going, that will be going up at Beauceju, that will have a few in the Babono constituency. Because Babono is a rapidly growing constituency, in that it, is find, it finds itself between Grosile and Castries. And because Babodo has so many outlets into Castries, it is becoming an area of great interest for residents. Mr. Speaker, agriculture. I have a passion for agriculture. And sometimes I said maybe that is why I challenged the last Minister of Agriculture 
And I had to debate what we do with agriculture. And Babono, the, the livelihood of the people in the constituency of Babono is agriculture. And therefore, I'm appealing to the Minister of Agriculture that in this um, budget item 41, that we will get support for the farmers. One, I think Minister of Infrastructure will assist with the roads, but we have issues of drainage and other issues. And during the course of last year, Mr. Speaker, from the CDP funds, I had to assist the farmers to give them some relief with regards to irrigation because the, the, the plants were dying, they could, the pumps, it was, and I gave them some fuel vouchers to assist them with irrigation. And I need to thank the Minister of Agriculture for providing the fertilizer for the farmers so that they can continue their production. And we have some new initiative. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, I am hoping that the agro-processing plant at Fonaso, which was closed down or loaned out by the last administration, will be reopened to create outlet for the farmers to sell their produce. It is a very important component in terms of the high end of agricultural pro pro um, produce. So we want that agro-processing plant reopened to serve the people in the Babono constituency. Mr. Speaker, as we look at Ministry of Youth and Sports, line item 53, um, 54, like all other colleagues, I'm coming with my shopping list for youth development and sports. And as we speak of youth development and sports, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to compete with any other parliamentarian, but the records are straight that Babono has produced a young, strong cricketer in the persons of Kimani Melius. We have Laverne Spencer, who blazed the trail with all the challenges. Now we have seen Julian Alfred following at the top levels, representing St. Lucia. We have Albert Reynolds in Javelin. And interestingly, we have an 85-year-old gentleman, I know he's a fan of Minister of Education, Parliamentary Rep for Denry North, who, in, in fact, this year in May, he wants to do his last walk, which he's 85 years, and he walks around St. Lucia. He lives in my community, and he keeps my life miserable because he wants to put that on his, on his record. But he has walked around the island about four or five times, Mr. Speaker. So he has great endurance, and that's a lesson for all of us. But Mr. Speaker, as we speak on sports, we need to add some humor to the sporting. With the semi-professional league, Mr. Speaker, Babolo versus Masha was the first game in the semi-professional league. I'll not tell you who represents Marsha, <laughs> but Babono won. Babono won Marsha, and therefore the Prime Minister, the, represent, the parliamentary rep for Marsha, has promised to give Babono greater support for having done such a wonderful job in competing. In, it doesn't matter, a goal, a goal is a goal. <laughs> So we are looking forward to a lot of support. And Mr. Speaker, as we speak on football, I have some clear records. There is a team in Fawasa called New Generation, Mr. Speaker. And that team, I understood, has been producing some of the top players in some of the football teams. So when I will bring out their parents' ID card, I will let you know where these players are from. But um, I know Minister of Sports step out. The gentleman that scored the goal for Grozily is from New Generation. So I did some homework and I think we just have to continue the team spirit, but we need support to give that team 
that is producing some of these top players in the Fawasa community. And Mr. Speaker, as I speak of Fawasa, we are actually working now in creating almost a little sporting village in the Fawasa community. By one, we have already done some work, we started some work on the refurbishment of the community center. We are actually building a toilet for spectators there, and we have to do some major renovation to the seats and so on. So we are already taking the lead with the hope that the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will come to our rescue, looking at the figures in this estimates of revenue and expenditure. Mr. Speaker, as we deliberate on the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I want to reiterate that the Babono constituency is alive and well. And the people in the constituency, they are determined to give Babono what we call a new look. And one of the philosophies in the development of Babono is to create Babono Central as a little hub, a little town, a little village. And with that, Mr. Speaker, we will require some basic facilities in Babolo Central, and I will be seeking the support of Ministry of Local Government, the support of Ministry of Infrastructure, the support of Ministry of Tourism, and the support of Ministry of Education. All these ministries have a role to play in what happens in Babolo Central. One, we are actually looking at repurposing the library so that we create some ICT um, center as well as providing some government services in that building. The Ministry of Infrastructure has to assist with redesigning the roads in Babolo Central and the Ministry of Local Government and Ministry of Economic Development will assist in refurbishing and modernizing the Babono Multipurpose Center that will provide some key government services to the people in Babono. So with that, Mr. Speaker, we will see a transformation. We have started some work through the CDP and some extensive work has taken place in the constituency, but with the support of the relevant ministries, we are going to achieve a lot more. Mr. Speaker, part of the plan is to ensure that at least nine of the communities in Barbado, we have established structure, we have a plan for development, and with that structure, we establish about 18 development committees. Each community has their development committee. And with these development committees, we are going to establish what we call some signature projects. So in Fawasa, Mr. Speaker, we will have the sporting village in Fawasa. In Lage, we have to improve the sporting facility. And Mr. I want to address Minister of Education. We are yet to commission or officially open the Lage Combined School. That is a big project in Babono that is completed, but just waiting for the CDB for the um, official commissioning and handing over of that. It's a state of the art, it's a smart school, and it's one of the most modern primary schools. Um, in the plateau area, I know Ministry of Tourism is looking at some tourism project there, and some areas in Maki, in Bogis, we are actually building the community and creating that level of awareness and support for the people of Bogis. In Debara, the Minister of Youth and Sports has promised to help us with the playing field at Debara. In Gara, we are still waiting for that early childhood centre. This is a community that really needs support. In Balata, we have the market. 
In Timon, we have an unfinished product project um, at the Timon Human, the Human Resource Center that is under the court. And as I said, in Babono Central, we will have the little town and the little village. Mr. Speaker, all I do now is to continue to work with my cabinet colleagues. Um, I, I, I believe heavily in the member for Castries East and Prime Minister who uses a calculator, which I believe is fair. It is fair and just. And when he applies the calculator, I am reassured that Babono will get his fair share of this budget. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, among our cabinet colleagues, we do not fight each other. We cooperate and we support each other. And I always go by the principle of the geese. When a flight of geese is moving to a destination, the leader always look out for the weakest one, the one that's left behind, and will put his wings under it and help that last one until all of them make the flight. We are not the ones that say the weakest one stay behind and let us fly with the strongest one. And I support that principle in this government. And as I face the challenges I had, I can make it clear in this house that the Prime Minister make sure he check on the weakest one and he put his wings to make sure we fly together. And today, this is why I'm here to speak so that the entire flock of geese get to the final destination. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I came here hoping that we would have a debate, but I realize we are having a discussion because the budget is so good that there is nothing to debate about. And therefore, some persons who should have challenged certain things in the debate have refrained from doing so. So therefore, I do not want to engage in any item or any activity that is a non-debate, but I have presented the case for the Barbado constituency, and I hope during the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, I will be able to speak a little more eloquent on the ministry that the Prime Minister had assigned me in terms of a uh, number of policy decisions that are taken in that direction, and I will speak to that. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to reassure you that I'm committed to the ideals of this government, the realistic and practical budget, and I understood from the other side that there was a surplus of 100 million. Mr. Speaker, if you have a surplus of 100 million, I can assure you that you are starting with something. At least you don't have to go and borrow this 100 million, if there is a surplus of 100 million. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I believe the government is on the right track. We are halfway mark, and the St. Lucian people are listening, they are following, and they know what is fact and what is fiction. They know what is right and what is wrong. And what we have to continue to do is to ensure that we keep them on the right track, we give them the right information, so that they can take the right decisions at the right time in their own interests and in the interests of St. Lucia. With this, Mr. Speaker, I lend my full support to the estimates of revenue and expenditure as presented by the member for Castries East, 
and the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.